Hello guys, my name is Benz and welcome to the video. Welcome back to the Known Pain a New Game series. This is where we lay with no hacks, no cheats, no anything. It is just honest, good, honest, hard work to get us where we need to be. Now, we're carrying on from where we finished off. Obviously, it's a series. But um, I just want to quickly, quickly have a quick recap. So we're going from Portsmouth to Russia because we had that issue in Portsmouth with the... Uh, the, the contracts thing where it wouldn't sync up because of the because of the pro mods mod it wouldn't, wouldn't work so that's why we're taking this little journey so we've got to finish this one off today I just want a quick look at money situation I want to see do we have any loans out we do have a loan going out um, how much money have I got on me can't balance 21 grand okay so we're not paying anything off uh, I do want to see how our ga how our drivers doing how other drivers are making us some cash here. Uh, profit per distance sixteen pounds twenty nine per mile. Oh, so that's a vehicle. Uh, hold on, hold on. Can we just, can we just go to him. I want to go to him. Uh, average profit per day a grand. Oh, that's not bad, I suppose. It does top it up. We need, we need more than that, really. Um, Okay, so he's making us some money, not a lot, but he's making us some money, so... Okay, that's that That's that job done. So, let's hit the road, let's carry on with this job. Now, we've got a bit of time today, so we can do a slightly longer journey. Um, I need to remember where the hell I'm meant to be going here, actually. Where I'm facing and where I need to be going. So I need to turn around, head back to the main road. I'm pretty sure I need to turn right, don't I? Yep, need to turn right. Okay, so we need to turn right around. Coming. I'm gonna put up. Sorry, mate. I'm about to click the front of that bus. I got him, so we'll just carry on with it. Sorry, mate. Whoopsie. Let's carry on. Let's crack on. So, get to the end of the road and turn, turn right. So, if anyone's wondering what the hell is happening in my face, where I've got this um nice mark here. Am I right there? Yeah, there. And I've got one down here which you can't really see. I don't think. Uh, don't shut up a little bit. Um, so I'm recording this on May the second, and the weekend before, I was away for a weekend up in Thetford Forest, and I had a airsoft weekend up. So I was actually playing airsoft pretty much the whole weekend during the day. I actually had a situation where I got the dead drop on somebody. Yeah, this guy had a much more powerful gun than me, and he just decided to. Well, it's all a part of the game, you know. It's me, own, sort of, me own fault for not wearing a face mask, but it was I got shot point blank range in the face. And, um, yeah, it drew some blood. It drew quite a lot of blood actually. Um, I actually had blood pouring on my face down here, and I had it pouring into my mouth down here, and quite a gruesome sight. Um, I was meant to try and save a picture of it. I Snapchatted my missus on it and totally forgot to save the picture, so bit annoying really. Yeah, that's what that is. So, I'm proud of that, actually. I'm actually proud um, that I've drawn blood for that sport because I do enjoy it so much. Uh, what else is it talk about? Oh, you're about to fuck me over, aren't you? Trying to pull out, pull out in front of me. There we go, like that. Um, so. SCS have announced more DLC on its way. Uh, actually, done a couple of announcements actually. Uh, one of the things coming up, obviously, is the new state for American Truck Simulator, and they announced that quite strangely. Really. They announced it with a little weird, mysterious little alien-based uh, trailer, which um, 
It said to me Roswell, because obviously this they believe they've had a UFO crash down in Roswell before. I've said that, I've said that. And I've always thought Roswell was in um in Nevada, so I'm thinking, well it can't be Roswell because they've already because Roswell's because uh, Nevada's already been released, so I don't really understand. But looking into it, Roswell's actually in New Mexico. So they're actually gonna launch the New Mexico uh, state as well, which I can't remember which where it is in relation to Nevada. I'm assuming it's down south. So you actually go further you're actually gonna be able to go down further south. Um, they've also seen there's gonna be some new um, like drop off locations or pickup locations. So they're gonna be slightly, from what the from what the pictures I've seen on the blog are they're slightly bigger and they do look slightly more complicated, so it'll be a little bit more interesting. Uh, there's also another DLC called, I think it's called Superpower or well, it's something along the lines, but it is really heavy cargo. So we're talking about 40 to 50 tons. Um, obviously, it's not going to be a mod, it's going to be based in the game. But the trailers themselves look pretty damn interesting. Um, I think I've only. No, sorry, I've seen pictures for both. It's going to be exact, pretty much exactly the same mod for. Um, pretty much the same DLC, so it's not a mod, it's DLC. It's going to pretty much be the same DLC for both ATS and ETS. Where it is going to be um, the trailer is going to have multiple pivot points. So, where you've got a pivot point um, on the truck, so where it attaches it is a pivot point, the fifth wheel, that's a pivot point. There's also going to be one on the very rear axle. So, where the rear axle of the trailer is, that's actually going to have a pivot as well. So the actual centre bit and the rear axle will actually bend as well. Sorry, I was going to try and I was just trying to show things using my hands. Um, and that is to allow you to get around the, the tighter turns. Um, See, so yeah, that, that rear axle is going to be steered as well. That is a problem on, on this game. It is um, You need to have uh, the trailer needs to have some sort of steered axle to get it around the tight turns. <laughs> the tight turns that this this game has. Um, sometimes even the trailer, the standard trailers, some of the bigger ones like the ones that carry the excavators, sometimes they're slightly too big for certain drop off locations. And you've got to be a bit clever with them. So if you start adding in uh, bigger trailers, you need to start modifying them to be able to get them around certain areas. Which is good, which is what I'm really liking the look of. Um, I've always, I've always tinkered around with like really heavy mods on ATS, not so much ETS, because it always seems to break the game. But yeah, that's something I want. Is we've got the, the 750 horsepower Volvo, we've got the 700 horsepower Scania or 710 or something along those lines, um, and we've got like the, the heavier. MANs and the, not so much the DAFs, DAFs only got the 510. We've got those bigger engines. <laughs> those 22 ton, um, or 24 ton excavators really aren't big enough in my eyes. They, we need something more challenging for that engine. It'll be something for that engine to uh, make it make it challenging. But also, you could try with the, with the smaller engines to see how you got on with that. I don't know when they're coming out. I would assume in the next few months. Uh, they did say there's been no release date yet. There is going to be. A, they still need to polish it all off. Oh, you're okay. Okay. Um, yeah, so you need to polish that off. I think it's just uh, mainly to get out some good news. We've not heard anything in a while. Um, anything based on ATS or ETS. There's still no news on adding more truck manufacturers or models to ATS, which is something that's. <sighs> that's something that's quite important to everybody. I like. I got me my brother. He's now playing ATS and ETS. Uh, well, he plays more ETS. Mainly for the fact of there is not enough 
trucks in ATS to keep it sustainable. It doesn't get interesting. You want to change it around. Sometimes you want to change it around a bit. start bringing in some um, more truck manufacturers. I need to start spicing that side of stuff up. Uh, that is one of the benefits of ETS is you do have a wide variety of trucks you can chop and change from. Um, ATS, even though they've done the map rescale, it's still not big enough. You still need to have a bigger map. You need to have more variety of where you can go to. Um, hopefully that's going to partially solve the problem with uh, New Mexico, but still, you've still only still only restricted to the west coast of America. You're still not getting anywhere near. The, you know, the amount of time it's taken them to get out. Uh, got to be up to four now, isn't it? Four. So we've got Nevada, uh, Nevada, California, Arizona, and New Mexico. So you had two. When you first launched, and I've only released two since launch, which was what we said a couple of years ago now. So they are taking their time on it. Unfortunately, I I don't want to. I have done before, but I don't like to put a downer on SES and say you know, bad things about them. But unfortunately, they are taking their time on it. Maybe there are certain things that we don't know about, you know, but I'll put that out there. That's that is an option. The car's coming. Get the power going. Yeah, so that is another option. We don't know what's going on. They might like, release five states in one hit, we don't know. But SES is not a huge uh, game and company. They only have a 50 people tops? I don't know. I really don't know. I'm not going to say 50 tops. I don't know. But I ain't got a lot of people. So, yeah. ATS is really being held back. <sighs> but ETS is still going strong. Uh, I. It's still a bit of a mystery why this game does. It's. It, I said it before. It's still. It's still a major. It's still a major um, mystery why this game is so popular with certain people. Like some people can't answer it. Some people just. It is just. Enjoy a nice, relaxing drive. I'm one of the people. I like. I know. I like. I like a nice, relaxing drive. There are certain people who, like, uh, I've got to make nice Deco. Let's slow it down a bit. Like, if you look at him, you think nah, he would play ETS too. He doesn't like a nice drive in a truck. I'll be a racist right But he does. Um, same with another guy, Top Gun. He seems to love a nice drive in a truck. I suppose you can say AK is another one. This game is is one of those phenomenal turning in here. Sorry, oh, just saw the little bit of a turning on the map. All right, where are we going? Then it's another shop. It is. I mean, sorry about that. I'm not mean to burp in the mic. Right. Stop. 
collaborate and listen. That'll do, that'll do. Time-wise, that'll do. Right. Need 24 hours. Whew. Cool, nice old chunk of XP there. So, uh, what about my... Uh, let's go over here. So, freight market. We can't do external contracts because of the pro mods, which is a little bit annoying, but don't mind. So, what is the most expensive job we got? Now, these two are going back to the UK. I do not want to go back to the UK. These are going down to España, which could be an interesting one because we haven't been down there. That's all going to be new, that journey. So, fuck it, Doug. Let's do it. Let us take that job. Oh, phone's going nuts. Go away. That's where we've got to go. Is it here? It must be here. I've got to pick up the trailer because there's no um, map marker. Do a lap of the building. Stop. Right, follow the market. So that's this one where we're going after. Why not? Can we change it up a bit? Or am I going to crash the game? So let's go to Pro Monster. Let's try this. Should work, hopefully. I hope. Trainer is there. That's what I need to hear when I went out. Ooh, whoa, 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 that was a bit Larry. Poor little Renault. Fucking too much, too much pressure on her. Just remember, I don't have advanced cup. Can I get out that way? No, I'm gonna go this way. Right, España, here I come. Come to me, España. I shall come to you. And away we go! And um, what's we here? Shall we just get whatever the hell that is? So we'll come up here, we'll turn right. Nope, actually no, we'll go straight, we'll go straight. Car's coming, no car's coming, so we'll get it before this light changes. Burn a bit of fuel. Not see the train line now. That fashion lot was behind that um, gate lock, uh, gate um, sign. Yeah, I thought the town lot is. Be a, gates to be a bit more um, obvious. But, oh well. Recruitment agency, so let's just put in here and we'll turn around in here. Turn around on the road. Hopefully no cars will fuck us over. AI cars I mean.
Oh, shut up. See, I'm turning around, it only takes a few minutes. Really beep, beep, bitch. Great driving there, in the wrong fucking lane, baby. Yeah, so, um, come out the last weekend, um, it was actually a really good weekend. Uh, we, it was a basic weekend by terms of camping, um, because we had no electric in the tent, it was fucking freezing, we had to sleep on our clothes, uh, there was no showers, there's toilets, thankfully, there was no showers, so, it was basically a, a gypsy shower, where we had to rub ourselves down with baby wipes, and went with my, um, brother-in-law Jack, Um, yeah, first night we got there, we um, set up a tent, went to go to Tesco's, buy some, buy some extra grub. Fuck that up, we didn't buy breakfast till the following morning. Got the old beers in. Basically, didn't get wasted, but we got drunk on the first night we were there talking to everybody, meeting some new faces, getting to know, getting, uh, getting some old. Knowing some, getting to know some old faces, and knowing, uh, getting to know some names. Um, because we've been there before, been there quite a few times now, and we've seen loads of people who go there, you know, the same amount of time as us, once a month or a couple of times a month. And we always see their faces, but never get a chance to speak to them because the combat day is just so hectic. So we never get to know names, we never get to know, never get to know people. So we use that social side of the whole weekend to get to know quite a few people. And we actually get to know the actual staff members, the the marshals, get to know them a bit more. Because we, we, we talk to them a lot when we go up there. Um, but we don't get a social side of stuff. We like, talk about the day or talk about we don't really get to know, you know where people are from or what they do. or you know, cause A lot of people, a lot of them have jobs outside of uh, combat airsoft. So it was nice to get to know that side of people. Um, so yeah, we stayed a Friday night. Then come to the Saturday, we started the day on... Uh, we started about half, ten, eleven o'clock. Once we got everything all, we got ourselves all geared up. Got ourselves all set up. <coughs> um, and then... Um, I guess we had a... It's quite clever. I, I like how they've done it because when you book in, you so you sign your waiver form saying if you die, this is your own fault, which I'm happy with. If you uh, oh, it's your you get given basically it's almost like a fioros only dossier sort of envelope sort of thing with your team name on it. So we were the excuse me, we were the regime guard. So we were technically the bad guys. We were um, like developing bio uh, biological weapons and um, trying to launch uh, missiles and that. Uh, yeah, so we were called the Regime Guard. We we're up against the JTF, so the Joint Task Force, which was the other team. Uh, we had missions of our missions was to protect three locations of. Um, Missiles, because we were waiting for the warheads to be delivered. So they were basically just the, the rockets part, of the missile. Um, we also had to. Uh, what else was we had to do? We had to do something else as well. Oh, there's a there's like a village game site there with like three buildings in there, and then inside the buildings there is uh, a POW, so a prisoner of war. Uh, I think it's. 
yeah, so since it was an enemy prisoner of war, so we weren't going to try and capture him. We, we captured him, you know, a part of the storyline, we captured him. He's waiting to be transported to the capital to be interrogated, so we had to protect him. Um, the third mission was... I'm not sure what the third mission was. I can't remember what it was. Oh, the third mission was basically just to try and protect all game sites, uh, or protect the whole map, to stop them pushing forward as much as possible. And then the fourth mission was a secret mission. It was almost like a, a secret achievement that you you didn't know about. So there was something um, you had to do, but you didn't know what you had to do. So it was like keep an eye out for things in the in the game site. So we had a bit of a situation with three guys on our team on that day who just kept dropping out. They had all the gear. They looked like. They looked like they might have been either ex forces or current forces. We're not, we weren't too sure, but they just seemed to keep dropping out. But even when they were playing, they were doing their own thing. They were fucking off and going and um, you know, going playing like a three-man Rambo sort of thing. So they would fuck off and do their own thing. We all had radios, so we could communicate with them. Um, we we were like our own team designation, so we all designated like different teams. Um, so their team, the three guys, they were designated as Romeo 1. Me, my brother-in-law and another guy, I think it was Clove at the time, he, we were designated as Romeo 2. And then guys that were taking the POW, POW camp and, and the closest missile site to the POW camp was designated as Romeo 3. <coughs> so these were like teams of 8 or 9. Uh, well our team was 8 or 9 and then the other team, I think they had like 10. We were outnumbered from the start, basically. Um, and as the game went on, um, we had a guy, uh, they, they were starting to push us, push us back. The guys over at Romeo 1, they got pushed back straight away because they weren't paying attention to what they were doing. They just got basically, they got wiped out. Um, went down to, come up to our location, and I was out as a scout. I got a couple of kills uh, to push them back. And then they pushed forward again. But then Romeo 1, when they respawned, did not come and help us out. So we then got overrun there. Then it got back, pushed back. And then we lost our sniper, our only decent sniper guy, or DMR. Because his gun packed up, so he went off, had to go off. We're like, fine, okay, that's not too much fun, we can defend this. But then the three guys decided they, needed to, they wanted to go and have a drink. So they backed out. So we were then down to a team of... Uh, so five, I think. I think yeah, we were a team of five against nine at one point. So we were getting our asses basically hammered. Um, come down to the, they were actually pushed away back to the POW camp, and then um, they basically just wiped us all out, walked in, and just took and just walked off. Um, and that basically that was. That was only like two o'clock in the afternoon, so we still have another two hours to do. But all our missions had failed. We'd lost, basically, lost the day. And the guys were like, "Yeah, okay, we understand that." Uh, the other, the other team, I mean, they were like, "Yeah, we understand what the situation is. We know that you've lost some guys, and yeah, okay, it was a bit unfair, but we, 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 we won the day." I was like, "Okay, that's fine. We, 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 we can't argue that you've won the day." Um, and they suggested that we, um, we do a little game of. Um, like timed last man standing, so one team would try and defend uh, the POW camp <clears throat> for as long as possible. And every each time we killed somebody, then they would move on to our team, or move on to, or just move on to the other team. I'm sure I'm paying attention now. And then when the last man's dead, that's when the timer cut out. I think to start off with. Uh, we were attacking. We managed to do it in like 14 minutes. Oh, sorry, like 15 minutes. No, sorry, well, no, sorry, it was 14 minutes. So we managed to do it in 14 minutes. And then we swapped over. So we were defended. And I got to the point where I was the last man standing and I was starting to shit myself. There's so many people out there with far more expensive guns than me. And that will. They got that's going to fucking hurt. So, uh. I managed to dart around the building, I got inside, popped my head out, no one has realised where I was, I managed to shoot a guy in the ass. he sort of fucking screamed like a little girl really, but that, 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 was, that was interesting. Um, so he wandered off, and then 
Um, I, didn't, I, didn't, I forgot at this point that it was timed, so I forgot that it was timed. So I then saw another guy behind a tree, so I sort of ran out of the building, run around. He didn't realise I'd gone behind him. And I'd be mad right now. <laughs> I was not a happy boy. I got well fucked off. I could have just. He was the last person I needed to push back. Once I pushed him back, I could have won won it for our team on that just that game. The game didn't count towards the weekend at all. It was, it was a bit of fun just to try and you know use up the time we had left. Um. But yeah, uh, so my mag ran out, and I was like, I won't run, run back. Check me other mag. That was still out as well because sometimes you can run around and get a couple of extra BBs out of them. And then no, uh, I was like, I've run out. I've, there's nothing I can do. I'm about to get mullered. If I'd have thought about it, I could have just held out just a, one more minute, just stayed in there for one more minute. They didn't obviously know I'd run out, of, uh, run out of ammunition. But I just held out for one more minute, and we would have either tied it or won it. Uh, so it was one minute in it. But I basically come out and I said, I had, had my mag in my hand. I was like, I'm out, I'm out, I give. I'm, I'm dead man walking here. So, um, yeah, if I'd have waited one more minute, we would have we would have won that. But yeah, that day finished. And even though we'd lost and we got overrun, we were still a little bit pissed off but with the other guys. But fine, whatever. That was me and my brother-in-law's first weekend, uh, Milson. And we fucking loved it. We loved every second of it. When we come to the night game, um, we had a few we had a few bevies, and the manager said, "Right, everyone's gone home now. All the paintballers have gone home. So all the guys that are here, there's about I don't know, 15 of us, maybe something like that." We said, "Right, let's gonna have a night game. We'll go and use the, the POW camp again. We'll have a night game. We'll do a similar thing where it's team um, uh, last man stand and sort of thing. So if you get hit." You go on the other side. Um, so, yeah, it was. It wasn't pitch black to start off with straight away, but it did. Oh shit! Oh my. But um, did get really pitch black, really pitch black. Some guys were actually using tracer rounds, so actually uh, glow in the dark BBs. Uh, you fire through a, a tube and that. Um, illuminates. That was quite interesting to see. Bloody green BBs fly across the map. Uh, but I think I got a couple of kills on that. That was that was quite interesting. That was um, because you actually had a the the objective was to find a box. Even if you wiped out the whole of the rest of the other team, you still had to try and locate a box with a buzzer on it. Um, the first, I think the first one we were trying to find, we actually killed everyone, we actually ran through all the buildings, all the buildings, all the buildings, couldn't find it. All of a sudden we found it on top of a rafter inside the building. Because um, they were quite, I think it's, it's, it could be inside the building, I'd just say where, it could be up in the fucking ceiling of a cat if they wanted it, and it was. And the other one I think it was hidden behind, um, there was like some MDF panels that were leaning up against a wall and they were hidden, it was hidden behind that. So it was quite clever hiding. Uh, but yeah, that was a very good night. Obviously, we're all we weren't all fucking fucked out of our head, but we we're all half cut and a bit jolly. So that was quite fu that was that was quite fun to do that really. That, there was no seriousness to that either. That was all. Everyone was really enjoying themselves. And that was we were all having a laugh. And all making silly noises at each other as well. So I really enjoyed the night as well. And then we got to the Sunday. Um, so the Saturday basically our team, the Regime Guard, was pretty much defending for the whole day. Um, but then the roles reversed on the Sunday. So our missions were, mission one was to locate uh, three ammunition dumps, or ammunition caches, and plant a C4. So we actually had given like a, a C4 style thing. Locate the three dumps, or caches, whatever you want to call them. Put a C4, flick switch, and then that's then blown up. Well, the marshal will come along and time it. You had to defend it for five minutes, so you hit the button, the alarm will go off for five minutes, then you had to defend that point. Uh, mission two was. This might be in the wrong order, but mission two was to locate three 
um, warheads that had been uh, dropped out of a plane. That we had a grid reference on the map of C4 or something like that, and those things, the, the warheads could be within a 200 meter radius of that one point, so you didn't know where exactly where they were, but you had to go and look for them and find them. Uh, mission 3 was locate two uh, biohazard uh, yellow cases which had uh, uh, biochemical weapon samples or something along those lines also made up and now there were 70 cases locate two of those and bring them back uh, also sorry, the the warheads were actually a two man lift so they were quite they were, they were, they were light, there was nothing to them you could fucking throw them in the air and jug them if you wanted to but for the realism they had to be a two man lift you had to pretend that they were a, a proper size warhead so they had to be a two man lift you had to have a two man team carry that back to the uh, back to the, the neutral zone yeah, everything, every, oh, sorry, yeah, everything that got brought up when you bring back you have to remain to the neutral zone um, mission 4 was uh, mission 4, oh, sorry, I think this might have been mission 1, it might be those two swap round. Mission 4 was, there was a vehicle abandoned, well not abandoned, there was a vehicle broken down. We had to get an engineer from um, from the neutral zone, get him to the vehicle. The guy had to repair it slash sit in and have a fag in the vehicle for 15 minutes. And after that 15 minutes the vehicle would drive off, we had to defend it. The only way to destroy the vehicle was to throw a grenade at it. It had to be a bang grenade, not a smoke grenade. It had to be a bang. Uh, so yeah, those are our missions. Uh, by the way, all these missions are played at the same time. You can do them in any order. Oh, uh, yeah, so you can do them in any order. Or you can just bosh them all out. We used a bit of tactics there because um, when you're in the safe zone, all the teams can hear you chatting around, can hear what you're saying, and what your tactics are going to be. And I sort of tried to give the guys a bit of a, a dummy by saying we're going to go for the vehicle straight away. That's all we're going to do: go straight for the vehicle. That sort of worked because they um, they basically hunker down on the vehicle and protect that pretty much all day. Oh, sorry, there was another mission. Sorry, there was another mission. The other mission, so I'm going to this guy. The other mission was um, one of the marshals, uh, Sticky was his name. I don't actually know which real name, I just know him as Sticky. He wore a basically a, a general's hat. He had a pistol with him, and he had a silver case. And that mission was you had to locate him, kill him because he's he was playing a defector. Kill him, get the case. And get it back to the neutral zone. Uh, the problem with that is we can kill him, but as soon as that case hits the ground, what land am I meant to be in? This one. As soon as the green hits, as soon as that case hits the ground, the enemy team can pick it up as well and move it as well. So that was another little mission, which that was actually the hardest one of the lot. But yeah, we managed to get the um, those three guys joined in on the day, and uh, they. I'm gonna hit that fence. Oh. They managed to. We oh sorry, me and Jack. Oh shit, I need to sleep. Let's pull over here. Cut in front of everybody. It's a bit nasty. Let's pull over. Engine off. Sleep please. Coolio, daddy -o. Let's turn down lights off, we don't need them on. Yeah, so I managed to locate one of the yellow cases as we were walking around, just before we got shot. I don't get a phone call. No spam activity. I don't know who it is, so they can leave a message. Um, yeah, so I managed to guide this Romeo 1 team to the uh, to the yellow case, and um, excuse me. 
Oh, sorry, something that's from my head there. Yeah, so I managed to guide this other team to the yellow case, and they managed to get it. Now, the other thing that was in play on this day was perk points. We actually had perk points which we could spend on certain items, like, um, say, UAVs, um, airstrikes, chemical strikes, and other certain things like that. Now, these guys actually took the um, yellow case and instead of either giving it to one of us to bring it back to the NZ or take it themselves, one of the guys actually hid it. Hid it to the point where the guy couldn't find it again or couldn't tell us where it was because we were in a position near them to go and retrieve it and bring it back. Oh, shit. Bit of an incline here. Oh, yeah, there's some detail here. Oh, we're down to 14 frames a second. Um, yeah, so we've sort of over the radio sound. We we want that yellow case. We need that yellow case. We want to use one of the points. We need to collect some points, get it back. And I was just like, nah. So it basically went half the day before they actually done anything with it and got it back. Um, they also managed to retrieve one of the um, warheads used to carry into a two-man carry. After that, they said, fuck it, okay, we're done. Now, speaking to one of the staff members, uh, Diane, who's actually the wife of the... Um, wife of the site manager, actually said that Whilst they were up getting changed, getting ready to go, they were actually saying that those were the only guys who were doing anything. Okay, that sort of. Uh, where are we going to be going here? Oh, where is she? I run. I need to drop off. These roads are confusing. Shit! in a second, I'm just going to work out where the hell I am and where I'm going to be going here. I like these roads. These roads are nice. We've got some parked up trucks on the side of the road, look. Nice! Right down there, mountain pass. Right, so this where we're dropping off. Looks like it. Bit of a bump here. Stop. Um, where are we meant to be here? Bambi. I mean, we get this way, but I'm sure we can survive Yeah, so, um, oh, we leveled up, uh, let's do fragile cargo, why not? 
pick it up job. What time? What time? How long have we been going for? Let's do another small one. And then we'll call it a day. Oh, fucking hell. That'd be a nice one to do. We can't do that today, though. So let's do start with the little guy. Uh, where the hell are we? We're down here. No, we're in Iran. Okay, whatever. Iran to Iran, no, I don't want to do that. Um, Ooh, that one goes actually into thingy, down to Bilbao. Fuck it, let's do that one. What we got? We're shamed. 14 tons, why not? Let's do a short one. Oh, yeah, so. Yeah, they actually said that. Um, I said to Diane that they were the only guys doing anything. Uh, we were talking too much on the radio, so they couldn't hear what they were doing, even though we were talking tactics and trying to direct them to where they needed to be. Um. But when they actually said that, we'd actually, we'd actually, me and Jack had recovered the other um, yellow case. Um, two of uh, two actually new guys who actually were rental guys, didn't have their own guns. Who, like their only second time ever playing airsoft, they managed to get um, another one of the warheads. We also had. Uh, where would my man be going here? In here? Yeah. Um, with the stuff that we actually retrieved, we actually managed to use those to spend on a UAV as well as a um, uh, yeah, sit down. Oh, hold on, that's going to the same place. That's worth more. That one's further. I don't know. Whatever. We'll go do that one. Yes, yeah, so we managed to be able to get enough to spend on a UAV as well as a um, a drone strike or an airstrike, whatever you want to call it, a missile strike. So, what we actually done was we actually located where they're actually all hanging out, and um, so at this point, at this point, we actually had a um, uh, a couple of men advantage on the other team because they lost a few people as well. But it sort of made it fair for what happened the following day. Oh, this will be a tight turn out of here. Ooh, that's nice. I like that. I love this part of the map a lot. We're going straight. Going up this country road. Oh, sweet. Oh, yes, yeah, so they said all these things. Um, uh, yeah, so what we actually done was we actually done a drone strike quite close to the car where they were actually defending. Uh, and we've done a UAV straight to the left of the car where we think some other people were in the bushes, in the trees. So, done that. So we managed to clear out the car, we managed to get our engineer to the car, defend it, at the same time, we also managed to find one of the ammo dumps. One of the ammo dumps has been a uh, like a sniper nest. Going. Let's go this way. So that was that was two missions actually done in one hit. At this point, we still had another um, another warhead to find. Oh, I'm going up here. I think I'm going up here. So still one warhead left to find, as well as finding sticky. 
At some point, I think we were out, me and Jack were out patrolling looking for Sticky. And at that point, they managed to find another warhead, so that was something else that was done. I can't remember who found the warhead. I apologize, I can't remember who found the third warhead. So, we should have slowed down too much. So, I managed to click that. So, the last mission now was to find Sticky. This job was made really hard because in a certain part of the map uh, called the Ravel Warren, the actual uh, density of the forest or the density of the, the woodland actually got really quite thick. It was actually really thick uh, wood. The only way you could see any way sort of through it was laying on, this, on your stomach and trying to see if you could see feet. And that was creepy, man. That was really creepy. You're always on your feet, you're always on your toes. Um, listen now. Because we said that if you were a defendant, defending team, you could just find a place, hunker down, and stay there. If you're attacking, you've got to try and find this person. Fuck knows what that was for. Hope that's paying off a bill. Not sure. So, yeah, so we're scouring this top bit. We thought, where we'd actually load, we're actually, um, uh, we would actually push them back to, we thought, they could really only be in this rabbit warren, only be in this area. So we're scouting through. It was just at this point where I actually got shot in the face because um, I actually snuck up on somebody and they actually managed to pull their gun before I did and they actually fucking just obliterated my face. Um, so we carried on. And we got to like, it was like uh, five minutes left of the game. And then Diane said, I've got a radio, because she joined us, because the people dropped out, a few people dropped out, she joined in, she wanted to play a bit and say, oh, I'll come in and help you, try and make your numbers up. So at that point, we were then back down to being the lesser team, we had lesser people. So we, um, so she got over on the radio and said, has anyone checked this uh, certain section? And we were walking on the outside, we hadn't gone into it deeply, because we just, because uh, we had, um, people had gone through on the radio with, um, sightings of Sticky on the outer ridge of the forest, so we were doing a, a quick scout about on the outer ridge. And we said to ourselves, you know, is he down in the bit where, where we were actually, we actually spawned in a certain area? Next to us was like a separate bit of forest. Um, so there was a bit of forest separated by a track and then onto the bits that we were looking in. And um, we said, we haven't been down in that area the whole game. Uh, at all. So we're thinking maybe they've moved down there. Maybe they have actually moved down there and you know slipped away from us. So then me and Jack, we had another um, I think it was a Portuguese boy who was with us. He was with us and we, we felt a bit sorry for him because he wasn't talking on the radio. So when we were talking away to listen to other people he couldn't listen in. Bit Bit sad, really, it was a bit annoying. He couldn't work out what we were doing. But it looks, I'll, it'll be strange for him when you when you hear what happened later on. Um, so we were going through the. Uh, we we said to ourselves, which me and Jack said to ourselves, we think he's going to be down this this area at the starting area. I think it's called the DMZ. It's called the Demilitarized Zone. That's just what they called it. So we we started walking down there slowly. Um, in this thinner bit of forest. All of a sudden, I come out on radio. Diane said, "Have you checked this area? Um, this corner area?" He said, "No." Um, she go, "It might be worth checking in there." Now, to start with, we were going to stick to our guns. We were going to we were going to stick with our head and think, "Right, no, we'll clear into the demilitarized zone, demilitarized zone," and um, because we just had a hunch. We just had a hunch. We'd been through everywhere in the right one. Couldn't find them apart from this one little area. We thought maybe Diane's helping us. She's a marshal. Maybe she's giving us a bit of a helping hand here because we are um, lacking some firepower. So we thought, I just said on the radio, copy that. We'll go and check it out. Um, over. So we thought, okay, well, fuck it. We'll just walk out there, go there slowly. Let's see if we can find anyone. Then all of a sudden, on the radio it was 
uh, sticky located, sticky located. We're in um, in pursuit. He's down in the D. He's in this DMZ zone, and we're like, "Fuck!" We started running. At this point, there was two minutes left of the game, so we fucking run like crazy. I mean, where we were beforehand, we were sort of, oh hello, where did the cars go? As we were going through nice and slowly to get through all the bushes, all of a sudden we were running through. And I mean, I actually have. I don't know if you can actually see it. I think I need to be here. I'm not sure. I don't know if you can see it through there on the camera, but I actually have. Uh, that one you can probably see it a bit better. I actually have cuts all over my arms from where we started running through the, the thorns. Whereas we were struggling to walk the length of the, the game site, no cars coming. We actually managed to run the whole length as we wanted this kill. We wanted it so bad to actually, on minimum, draw, draw the game. So uh, we fucking pelted it. Jack was a little bit ahead of us, and then he said, "Jump to the ground! Jump to the ground!" He he he'd seen Sticky. Paid it? I thought I paid. He'd seen sticky, so he dropped to the ground, dropped to the ground. And I could see him. There was another guy with him, who's a fairly older guy, I think his name his name's Ray. Uh, I know I know him a little bit. And he's he's very good at air, so I think he might be X Forces. Haven't had a proper chat with him yet about that. But Um so Ray was slightly heavy and then was sticky. And I could see him running, and I thought, I need to do something, they're just going to run right past us. So Jack hadn't said get up yet, because um, he had a bit of eyesight, and I thought, nah, I'm going for it, I've just got to go for it. I just got up. Uh, Ray was actually closer to me, but I, I, I wanted to get that kill on Sticky. So I shot Sticky, I managed to get the kill on Sticky. Um, and Jack managed to get Ray. And in our confusion, we got a bit confused with who'd shot who, and they didn't actually call their hits quite loudly. So I actually shot Ray again. When he had already been killed, and um, Jack had shot Sticky against them, actually, actually got killed twice. Um, and we did apologise about that at the end. Basically, we killed him. Um, Jack got the case, and I mean, he could have at that point he could have given Usain Bolt a run for his money, because by this point there was one minute left of the game, and we still had to run the, the actual or well, the width of the game site, and. It's a bit windy. Yeah, I had to run the width of the game site. Fuck me, Jack, run like you saying, but I couldn't keep up. I was just chatting over the radio saying, um, red team, red team, uh, case obtained. Um, now en route to neutral zone. So Jack was running like crazy. And he was, he started to see him start, start to give out, start to give out. And then he was shouting on the radio, uh, no, someone from Neutral Zone, come and meet me, come and meet me halfway, and then take over. So actually then someone uh, ran towards him, picked up the case, and ran back. So that was a, a proper team effort, and I think by the time the case was actually got back to the uh, the Neutral Zone, it was like 45 seconds or 30 seconds left of the game. So we managed to, overall, we managed to draw, um, but I managed to get the sticky kill. Jack managed to help get the case back to the, the thing. Uh, I think over the whole weekend I managed to get like something like eight kills, which wasn't brilliant. I wanted more, but the finish you couldn't have written the finish. You couldn't have planned the finish. The marshals were actually egging us on because it was getting so tense and it was getting so good. But yeah, the finish of the day. It was a draw, but for us it felt like a win. It felt like a major win because we tried so hard with so much effort into that day to try and make amends for what happened the, fall the, the day before. And that was just a perfect end to it. A perfect end. Um, yeah. It was, it was absolutely, absolutely phenomenal. Have I got a light now? Um, yeah, so I've got some cuts and bruises for it. Uh, my face is alright today. Well, it's been a couple of days obviously since um, we went out there. But 
my face that's fine actually it's, it, it never actually got sore it got a little bit sore afterwards but it never got like really bad which I was quite surprised at like this one you can barely see now this one is really healing but yeah that was a really enjoyable thing if, if anyone is interested, I know there's some people who watch this who are from around my area. If you want to do airsoft, you're more interested in doing airsoft, um, I can have a chat with you and get you up to theft with us. We want to get more people doing it anyway. Um, because it is such a good sport and people don't realise. If you like your Call of Duty video games, your Battlefield and all your first person shooters, then... Whoa, come here mate. Uh, am I going down here? I think I am. Airsoft is the best way of getting yourself out into the field and actually playing those sort of games. I don't know where I'm going to be here. Actually playing those sort of games yourself. You actually got the gun in your hand and you're shooting people. I love this map. I love this part of the map. I'll stay in Spain for a little while. So yeah, airsoft is, is an amazing sport. Um, I still need to do a video showing me gun off and showing some kit off because I, I do want to show you what it is, what actually, what you know, what airsoft actually is. And um, I just don't quite know how I'm going to deal with this. I have to be a, like a thing I record on the phone sort of thing. It's going to be a bit of a pain in the ass. It needs to be a two-handed sort of thing to show a gun. But I'll get to that point. I will get to that because it is an amazing thing to do. Like I say, if you are interested in it, get in contact with me. I'll, I'll give you some information about it. Um, if you're not, if you don't live in this area and you can't. You don't want you can't play a game with me. I'll give you some information on finding a site in your area. I'll give you information of um, what kit to get, how to do it, what it is. I'll put you in the direction of a video to watch to to play that game. Uh, to, to, uh, sorry, put you in the direction of a video so you can better learn about the game. Um, Airsoft is an amazing game. Um, people keep saying oh, it's like paintball. It's like paintball. It's not like paintball. Paintball is completely different. Um, paintball, obviously, you get shot. You know you've been shot. Fair enough. It takes. The, it, you don't have to have any trust in the game. Airsoft is an honesty-based game. You get shot. You have to put your hand up and take the hit and say you've been hit, um, which is where this, which is where it's such a good community because you have to trust one another to to play the game. You have to. You have to trust people to play the game. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll talk about this in another video. I'll do another airsoft video. I'll do an airsoft video at some point. I will go through. I will go through what it is and what gun I got and some of my gear because I, I, I do want you guys to know about it and um, I want to raise awareness of airsoft because not a lot of people know about it. Um, and I reckon if there was, a, it's, it's going to be a great deal amount of people who, who, if they knew about it, they would certainly take it up and do it because I was one of those people. I'd heard about it, didn't know much about it, learned a bit more about it. I'm an addict. I could quite happily spend a thousand pounds on a gun if I had a thousand pounds to spend on a gun. I don't. If I did, I would. Um, and it's sort of, I wanted to buy some bits for the PC, but it's sort of, I want to want to share that money now between Airsoft uh, because it is just such a fun thing. And as this this weekend I done is just is just uh, I now have a whole new area of friends for Airsoft. Um, and I know more about the sport now, and I know, I don't know, I just know more, I just, it's just a better feeling to know about Airsoft and what it is, and, oh, oh, okay, I'll leave now, I'm blabbering on now, but I will get to it, trust me, I will get to it, keep reminding me about that video, and I shall make that video for you guys, but for now guys, that is it, thank you all very much for watching, I shall talk to you all very soon, bye bye.